Yo, algorithm, we in the building. Let's get it. Yo, salute to everybody already here in the building, man. Y'all know what time it is, man. Welcome to the latest installment of the Graphic and Wasted Show. The Wasted and Graphic Show, whichever way you like to slice it. Shout out to everybody from all across the country, man. Where's everybody checking in from, yo? Because yeah, I need to know, man. I need to know where is everybody at, man? Because <laughs> Graphic, I'm going to be honest with you, brother. I've been running into people from the show. But and it's it, I'm like I can't believe the reach of this show, man. It, yeah, it, man. it floors me every time, man. I yeah. ran into somebody today. I forgot to tell you, man. It's it's actually insane how much how much love we get, man, all over the place. We see Downey in the building, Connecticut, Utah, Arizona, man, San Bernardino. Salute to New Orleans, Denver, man. Salute to everybody. Salute to the greatest chat in the building. Y'all know what time it is, right? Make sure you wipe them feet, pay your bar tabs, hit that subscribe button on both channels. We definitely appreciate you guys. We're on our way to two new milestones, you guys. Do me a favor. It's free. Hit the sub button. We're not asking for anything. Just hit that sub. Waste is about to hit that 15K mark here soon. We got to get there ASAP. You know, I'm trying to hit that 25K before the draft. I think it's very reasonable. I think about, about three, three, 300 subscribers. So our that, man, it'd be great to be able to celebrate that achievement out there in Detroit when I finally get the link back up with my brother. You know what I mean? In uh, Detroit in a few weeks, man. Some things to talk about today, you guys. Um, you know, something that we're going to kind of kill that whole narrative off something that just kind of hit the um internet today hit these raider streets we're gonna get rid of that um something else also that came across our desk a few days ago you guys already seen it um i'm gonna be real with you it's not new news but we're gonna talk about it because everybody's looking at it's the off season so everybody looks at all this old news as new news it's not any new news this was already a well-known fact but we're going to talk about that also. We're going to talk about draft coming up man if you guys are in detroit man make sure to let us know because Day one of the draft, we're going to the draft. We're going to be there present. We would love to get with you guys, man, have a drink, kick it with the nation, take, take some flicks, eat some good food, and rock with the nation. Day two, day three, we're probably going to be podcasting uh, from the Airbnb. So if you guys don't catch us those, those last two days of the draft, pull up on us, man. Uh, day one, Detroit, we're going to be over there. We would love to see you guys. And real quick, man, rest in paradise, the juice. You already, man, OJ, man. Also, rest in peace, man, to uh, to Mr. C. Mr. C, yes. the finisher. Yeah, man, one of the goats. Legend, bro. One of the goats. If y'all are not from, you know, the East, y'all not familiar with DJ Mr. C, he is the man who brought the notorious B.I.G. to the rap game. He's yeah. also Big Daddy Kane's DJ. Yes. You know what I'm saying? He's going brother number one. Legend. That's the flex and DJ enough. Bro, if you, if you partied, and you came up in a certain era and you from the East Coast. Yo, let me tell you, man, there's no better DJ, man. Him, yeah. Kid Capri, they different. Flex. Yeah. And as somebody from the West Coast, I am a hip hop historian. You already know that, Wasted. Like, I love Mr. C. I know all the off, you know, the shit that everybody looks at him as. I don't care about the personal stuff, the music, and what he brought to the New York area, the tri state area, and just in, 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 in totality, man, even in California. Salute to Mr. C, man. Rest in paradise, man, to him. But once again, rest in paradise also uh, to uh, OJ Simpson, man. We're not going to go into the political side of all that shit. We're just going to say rest in paradise. We, we're not here to say anybody was guilty, non-guilty. We don't care about none of that. We just want to say rest in peace, man, and pay our respects to two legends that passed today, man. But uh, how you feeling today, man? Yo, man, I feel good. I got my coffee, bro. I had to go stop and go grab it because, you know, wifey's not here. Yeah. Nobody makes a better yeah. cup of coffee than wifey. But yeah. she's not here right now, so I had to go and go settle for this trash. 
There you go. <laughs> <laughs> I was supposed to actually be at the A's and Rangers game right now. It's the bottom of the ninth. We're up 1-0 right now. But um, I know they're going to somehow, some way butcher this. I'm actually happy I saved my money. <laughs> but I was going to say, I was supposed to be at the game today in Arlington, but I decided on staying home. I wanted to do a show with my brother. If you guys get a chance to also, tomorrow, I will be live, um, I believe, 4 Eastern to 6 o'clock Eastern on Mitch's channel, you guys. If you guys can, go over to Chat Sports, the Raiders Report. I'll be over there live with our brother Mitch and our brother Chugs. We're going to have some fun tomorrow, you guys. If you guys get a chance to pull up on us, we're going to have a ball tomorrow, have some drinks, shoot the shit, have some off-season Fun man, once again, you guys, real quick before we get into it, wipe them feet, y'all, pay them bar tabs. Um, let's get into our first first thing. I don't know if you just seen this, it just it just uh dropped right now. Um, a report came out wasted, right? And, and I, I'm gonna keep it a keep it a bean, man. I, people around this time, a lot of people live for clicks, so I, I don't know how this guy would even actually have this kind of <laughs> intel, but it dropped on Bleach Report Raiders rumors, Vegas not expected to draft a quarterback at number 13, Amid. Michael Penix Jr. buzz. So um, Jordan Reed of ESPN reported the Raiders are shifting their focus away from quarterback and will instead try to fill one of their biggest needs elsewhere on the roster. That is the cornerback position or offensive line. Um, they, they mentioned uh, uh, Fashanu from Penn State. They also mentioned J.C. Latham, uh, right tackle out of Alabama. And then they mentioned our two guys, Quinyan Mitchell out of Toledo, um, and Terry and Arnold out of Alabama, um, they're saying that Antonio Pierce has publicly said that the team's focus is um, on three positions, the offensive line, corners, and quarterback. What do you what do you take from this Amit? All this uh crazy buzz and shit that we're, you know, um that that Mark Davis has gave Tom Telesco his blessing to move up to the top three to get Jaden Daniels. How do you feel about these latest rumors that just hit right now? Bro, I mean, one, you know, as far as Mark Davis giving his 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 supposed blessing. Dude, he gave him his blessing when he hired him. Yeah. Like, that was a news. Know, do you guys know who who Mark Davis is? Mark Davis is the kind of owner and the kind of boss that everybody loves. Hands off. He, he empowers you to do your job. And if you don't do your job, he holds you accountable. That's what I like about Mark. He will hold you accountable. He's no cupcake. But, yeah. you, but he's hiring you because he doesn't know how to do it. Yeah. Mark Davis doesn't come in meddling and saying you better do this and do this and that. But, yo, he's given the, the, the other GM the latitude to go out and get Devontae Adams a trade away our first round pick. Yep. So conversely, he doesn't need to give them the, the, the blessing. No. He doesn't need to because he doesn't meddle like that. So I think that that's a, a I just think grab this is lying season. It's yeah. lying season from the organizations and it's lying season from the media, because guess what? You really don't know unless you're right there in the office with these guys. You got guys in the building with the Raiders every day who don't know what the fuck is really going on. No. There's not a lot of leaks right now. I'm going to keep it a buck, bro. Most of the people that I even know that are actually in the building or outside that know people around, no one knows anything at this point. That's why, man, it's, it's always fun to come on these shows and kind of like, what is it, ne negate? all the bullshit that's going on right now, because realistically, you guys, nobody knows where we're going to go. It's easy to put out an article that says, we're going to go right tackle. We're going to go corner because they're two positions of need. They're going to get away from the quarterback position. Um, I think that's what we should say going into the draft. I don't think we want to show our cards and, and, and let, the, let the NFL know that if we are trying to go up and get a quarterback, I don't, we don't want anybody to know what we're doing and what our plan is. You know what I mean? I think that they understand a quarterback right now is definitely a need. And if someone's available at 13 or if one of those top three guys drop, we're going to go up and go get them. It's just it's just a matter of what it's going to cost in order to do so. But I'm going to ask you, man, because we talked about this a million times already. If we do lean towards the right tackle or corner position, what position are you valuing over the quarterback position, right tackle or corner? And real quick, salute to Chris on donating to both our channels. We appreciate you, brother. Yeah, shout out to him, man. Yo, I mean, to, to be real with you, at, at this point, we're a defensive-led football team, right? But if I'm being honest, the thing we definitely need to do is 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 get a star tackle. Yes. Yes. What that'll do is that'll that'll essentially make us the kind of team that we want to be. We want to be the kind of team that even if you don't have a great quarterback, we're still competitive and lucid and and, and viable, like the 49ers. And I hate yeah. to bring the 49ers up because I can't stand them. It's fast though. Their their roster is phenomenal. Yeah. They got a guy, like Brock Purdy was Mr. Irrelevant. They got this man playing at an MVP level. And yeah. I'm telling you right now, I'm not trying to take anything away from Brock Purdy, but take Brock Purdy and put him on 
probably 28 other teams in the National Football League, and he probably, you know, it would, would be an abject failure and cut. Yes. So that's the kind of team I want to be. I want to be physical. I want to be able to impose my will on whomever. And, yeah. and I, I think effectively we would have addressed both trenches and then you build the team out. Because you can get value at corner later on in the draft. Yeah, and, th and there's a shit ton that we've always talked about. You know, we talked about a bunch of guys, you guys. You know, the Kyrie Jacksons of the world, the Cam Hart's. Um, you know, there's a young pup that we like a lot out of Georgia that you can probably target in the second round. I'm gonna be part, I'm gonna be real. I think that we're gonna lean towards right tackle. I, I, I truly do. I think that Tom Telesco knows you have to build the trenches up, and he's he's done it before. He's got Zion out of Boston College with the Chargers. He went and got Rashawn Slater. You know, what I'm saying he knows how to draft in the trenches on the offensive side of the football, and I, I think that's the way we go. Um, it will be difficult though to pass up on one of those top qu uh, quarterbacks if they do drop. You know, what yeah. I'm saying, but. Um, who's to say, man, that, that Penix isn't gone in the top 10? Then it makes it even easier for us to look at 13 and say, let's just go right tackle. It's a very realistic thing where he said that Michael Penix is gone in the top 10. And yeah. then you look at potentially the Bo Nixes of the world that we like. You know what I mean? We like, but I wouldn't target him in the first round. You know what I'm no. saying? But if he's available in the second round and you go get him, I I'm not against that because I think, you know, the way – um, you know, the way Getsy wants to run this offense, I think that Bo Nix would be a good quarterback in that system. Get rid of the football real quick, lean on the run game heavy. I think that Bo Nix would actually be good in our system. I'm not, I'm not a huge Bo Nix guy. You know that. Yeah, me neither. But I do believe that what he did at Oregon is something that you have to you have to look at it and, and, and salute him. And I think that if you put him in the proper system, I think that's why he was salivating that the chance of potentially playing for the Denver Broncos and Sean Payton, because mm -hmm. he knows what that scene that, that that scheme is kind of tailored to his game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, look. A lot of offensive coordinators like system quarterbacks. Yeah. They, they like those guys because mm -hmm. they don't have, when you have a guy that's a unique talent, a guy like, say, for instance, you know, a Mahomes kind of a guy, Lamar Jackson, it's kind of harder, even though they're better players, because you have to take whatever you were doing previous to them and adjust it because those are unique talents. Yes. Guys that are boilerplate, like, like Bo Nix, you know, like seven or eight in every category, you can take him. He's a guy that you know has dealt with a lot of different schemes in college, right? You know he's he, he can be taught. You know that up here he's good, and you know that you can plug him in and just pretty much go like this with him. This yeah. is what I want you to do. Yeah, I don't want you to play outside of the scheme. When you get a guy like Patrick Mahomes, it's kind of hard taking that kind of talent and putting it in a box. Yeah, he yeah. does a lot of things that no one else can do, and you got to learn to live with that as a coordinator. You yeah. know what I mean? Yeah. So Bo Nix is cool for the Raiders. If we are not taking him in the first round yeah. and somebody got on me on my show about that, I said, dude, why would you not want to take a guy that had a first round grade from a lot of people in the second round? Because now you're not married to that contract. Yeah. If you see somebody next year that you like and you want to move up and they're a unique talent, your position to do it, you can do it. And the you thing can is this, it. though. You realistically, my, my bad brother, I didn't mean to cut you off. You, you, you want that fifth year option if possible. Right. You want that because. You know, you have that extra year to say, okay, is, is this the guy moving into the future? Yes, he gets a bump in pay. But if you had to, if Bo Nix is still on the board at the end of the first round and it doesn't cost you a shit ton and all the other top guys are off the board, do you move up in order to pick up that fifth year option? It depends on how how valuable you view him. Are you are you drafting him because you know you need a quarterback and he's the you're not penciling him him in yes. to your guy. You know I mean, what I'm saying? Like, you understand what I'm saying? Because, like, yeah. when you draft a first-round quarterback, it's different. The whole organization has to be on the same page to make this kid successful. But yeah. when you draft a guy in the second round, you're like, okay, we'll bring him in, and if he beats eight and out, it's a real competition. If he yeah. beats him out, then he starts. But if not, we can live with him sitting there. Yeah. yeah. Right? So it yeah. depends. It depends on what we're talking about. Like, for me, I would prefer the latter. I would prefer us grabbing a second without that fifth-year option because now you're married to the guy. Yeah. I, like – Look at the position the Redskins were in. Sam Howell was a guy that they didn't take in the first round. Mm -hmm. He was a good young quarterback. They were developing him. But you know what? Serendipity happens, and they wind up with a generational guy within reach. Yeah. So it wasn't even hard for them to cast him aside. Mm -hmm. When you draft a guy in the first round, it's harder for you to do that. Look at what the Giants are dealing with. They're yeah. in a big conundrum now because they're like, damn, we drafted Daniel Jones. Are we going to keep him? Are we going to move on? Are we going to move up? What are yeah. we going to do? You're like a no man's land. I think when they're drafting the second round, it's easier for you to say, this guy is okay, but I can continue to shop. When you draft him in the first round, you got to continue to stay the course even when you should. Yeah. 
I think that the commanders made a, a huge mistake moving on from Sam Howell after after one year. He did really good for them. He had to throw the football down there every fucking down. You know what I mean? And they got rid of him and, and jettisoned him pretty much and sent them where to Seattle, I believe. You yeah. know what I mean? I think that if they do end up taking Drake May, because I think that Jaden Daniels is the better polished product right now. I think Drake May eventually can be that guy for you. He may he may take a year or two to develop, but if they go Drake May and they let go of Sam Howe, they may be in trouble. Waste. I'm going to be honest with you because you're not starting Marcus Mariota. You're not. like At this point, I think the commanders are going full Jaden Daniels mode because you have to make up for moving on from a product like Sam Howe that had a pretty good rookie year. You know what I mean? And uh, That's why I think this whole Jaden Daniels thing is still very much realistic, you guys, but it, it's a, still a long shot at this point for us. I don't care if you got your blessing and all that. No one is dumb enough to go out there and say, okay, well, Jaden Daniels is the guy. Let's go get him three first, three seconds, and three thirds, and let's go get our guy because now you literally just <laughs> sold the farm for a guy that may not work out for you. I personally, if you're not going to move up to get Jaden Daniel, I would be okay with going tackle corner, maybe a, a third round, a, a guy like a Jordan Travis or a Spencer Rattler, try to develop them. You know what I mean? But fill the positions of need because at the end of the day, you guys, I know us Raider fans don't want to hear this, but it's going to take a lot anyways to, 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 to get over the Ch Kansas city chiefs hump. Uh, it, it, just realistically, like, do we go into this season thinking we have their, we have their, we have their calling card? Like, we know what we, it's going to take a little while to get that going. Even if you have a Jaden Daniels, you know what yeah. I mean? Like, yeah. so at the end of the day, build this thing the right way. Don't just make a drastic move just to make a move because the fan base will be excited and all that stuff. Don't sell your future in order to to just hope that it works out. Now you better be for sure and understand what you got going on if you move up for the likes of a Jaden Daniels. And, and I'm going to tell you why you don't want to do that, right? too far and saw off the future because what are the odds Jaden Daniels comes into this national football league is better than Patrick Mahomes. Damn near slim to none. Patrick Holmes, yes. Mahomes is, is not just generational. That. Now he's generation. He's really for real generational, right? So the way that you beat them is having a better roster. Yeah. And yeah. then now when you sell your future off, it's harder for you to have a better roster because you don't build a better roster through free agency. You build it through 80% draft. 10% free agency, right? Yeah. And 10% luck. Yeah. To be honest with you, going out there and scavering the waiver wire or going out there and getting guys, you know, on, on, that are on people's practice squads and hopefully they work out for you. So, you know, we're not there yet. We're not there to where we are only a quarterback away. Yeah. We're not there. Like when the But, but you can be if you draft correctly this year yeah. with all the other pieces. And, I, and I've been saying that all offseason because if you look at what the 49ers did, when they went up and got Trey Lance, right? Mm -hmm. They were in that position. Mm -hmm. They they had everything. They had everything. And if I'm not mistaken, Christian McCaffrey was there as well, right? Mm -hmm. they, Trey Lance, well, did they get Tristan Chris, they, yeah, they, 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 they got him later. They got him they later. Got him later. Yeah. But they still had a damn good roster. They roster. Oh, yeah, the defense was top top defense in the league, and they had some moving, they had some pieces on the offensive line, you know, on the offensive side of the football as well. Ridic ridiculous roster, a player or two away from having the best roster in the game, right? So that's why they did that. They wanted to get a dynamic guy in the center, and I understand that. Yeah. The thing with us is, is that now we're sitting here in no man's land in a sense, and we have to make sure the way that we beat them is that we're able to beat them up on defense. Right, stop them, and we're able to impose our will on their defense from the, from 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 our line and our running game. That's the only way you beat them. You take yes. the football out of Patrick and Mahomes' hands, and 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 I'm gonna be honest with you, bro. It's it's not moving up and trading away four first round picks. Yeah, that's tough. And don't get me wrong, if we go that route, I'm excited because we excited. fans, right? Yeah, we I'm fans. Excited. But if you're asking Graf and wasted, if we're the GMs and we're the ones signing that check, yeah, we ain't doing that. Yeah, it's tough, man. Salute to uh, Ten Commandments on a five dollar donation as well. Salute to Eris. We're gonna talk about this also. Thoughts on what Tom Brady said? I have no thoughts. At the end of the day, man, Tom Brady knows what he's doing. You know, it's the off season. He's having some fun. I don't even think realistically that he would want to come back to the game at all. I don't know if you've seen the interview, but he pretty much said he st he's he stays in shape. He's ready to go. If if the Patriots, Raiders, or Niners came calling, I think he's having some off season fun. You guys, it is not a realistic option. I think in the next few months, Tom Brady will have some ownership stake, and it's over with at that point. So, and Tom even said in, in the interview himself. Uh, Aris that he doesn't know if he could even play quarterback if he had any type of ownership within the Raiders. It, it, it's not going to happen. To be real with you guys, last year, yeah, it would have been cool if we brought Tom Brady in, right? It would have been okay. This year, 
we're understanding how the NFL moves. You got to get you a young guy, young signal caller. You don't want to bring in a guy like Tom Brady that's just going off of previous accolades. Yes, he's probably the greatest quarterback of all time, but he's not that guy anymore. You know what I mean? So I think he was having some fun. I think, you know, he's just playing into the offseason. He knows what he's doing. He wants to keep his name in, in, in the headlines. It, you know, it, it makes sense. But Tom Brady's not a realistic option, you guys. He's, he will not be the greatest quarterback at all. I would be actually fucking completely shocked if somehow, some way he came back. But I mean, it doesn't make any sense. There's no real connection with Luke Getze. If anything, the Josh McDaniels, if he didn't come back with Josh McDaniels, the guy he won Super Bowls with, why the hell would he come back with an unknown like Luke Getze calling the shots on the offensive side of the football? You know how much muscle mass Tom Brady's lost? Bro, yes. You see Tom Brady. Tom Brady looks like a scratch golfer now. That guy is, yeah. is 40, he's going on 47 years old. He looks like a shaved elbow. Yeah, yeah. He's, he's Doug, like when you, when you get in your 40s and you stop doing something, yeah, that's it. You're done. Yeah. Like when you stop playing basketball, like like with me, right? Yeah. I I, st- I used to play ball all the time. I used to hoop all the time. Every weekend when I stop and like, and I'm not super old, but me and Tom Brady, <laughs> you know, we were on the same age, right? Yeah. If I try to play basketball the way I used to even four or five years ago, I can't. I can't yeah. jump the way I used to. I can't move the way I used to because I stopped. Yeah, that's the key to it. Never stop. But when you stop, you're done. It's Tom right. Brady ain't playing no more, bro. It yeah. don't make no sense, man. It's over, y'all. It's over, y'all. Like Josh said, um, it's called smoke screens factory. Hey, real quick, salute to my guy, uh, East Coast Gridiron in the building. Also, we will be live Sunday, you guys, breaking down mid to late round uh, hidden gems with our guy, East Coast Gridiron. So stay tuned for that Sunday. We will be doing that show. Salute to my guy for always po- uh, popping in. And salute to you also, man, for, for supporting Oak Las Vegas. And I'm also grabbing some of the uh, OLV Raiders hot sauce, man. I appreciate you, brother. Um, salute to True Raider Podcast. If we get JD5 and he as good as we hope he is, we will not miss them picks. This is facts, but it's still a crapshoot at this point, True Raider, right? It, it's it's very questionable. Like, like, if you move up and you move on from all that, you got to remember, at that point, Antonio Pierce's job is at stake. Luke Getzies is at stake. I mean, all these guys, if you make the wrong move and, and, and give up all that draft capital and it does not work, a lot of people may lose their jobs, man. And then think about it like this. You got players in their prime, like Max Crosby, Devontae Adams, that if it doesn't work out, they may be like, look, I'm ready to go somewhere and win now. You know what I mean? I'm not, I'm not out here putting my body on the line week in and week out to continue to lose. So it's it's a risk. And I know Devontae has been screaming from the mountaintops, Jaden Daniels will be the guy. But at the end of the day, he's it's always good to say he's the guy until he's not, right? Is it right? It's, yeah, like, it's like, come on, bro. Like, first of all, even if they want to, even if they want to, if 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 Washington thinks that Jaden Daniels is going to be the guy to, to to get them into the future, if Washington thinks he's a guy that can be a a, a top five player, because when you're taking somebody at two, that's where you're projecting them to. When you take somebody at 18, 20, you're hoping they can be your starter, and you, you're thinking they could be your starter. When you take somebody at the top of the draft, that means they are the franchise day effing one. And if they're in on him, bro, there's not there's nothing you can give them. To not take this kid. No. I'm telling you now, man. So come on, you got a new regime, new ownership over there, new yeah. people in the front office. They're trying to put their stamp on things, bro. Yeah. And, and Cap, I'm going to be real with you, bro. Great teams know how to move assets at the right time, right? To be real with you, Devontae may not be here in two years. I'm going to keep it a buck. Like if, if he's still playing at a high level and we're not winning ball games, you move him for some assets. That's what teams do year in and year out. They move on from superstar guys. I mean, I, I've seen I seen something the other day where it pretty much stated like most of these most successful teams they'll move on from like a Devontae Adams, then draft his replacement on a rookie deal, and then they move pieces around to have in order to have money to you know have the quarterback have all like at some point, man. Great teams move on from them picks. And Devontae, yes, he was born a Raider, and yes, he's been here for a few years. He's not Tim Brown, a guy that was here pretty much his whole career. Like, this is a guy, like, there's not a lot of, yeah, we love him personally because he grew up a Raider fan, but we've only had him for, what, two years? What's that? Yeah, and, bro, this ain't the 1980s and 90s either. Yeah. Just ain't that. You know what I'm saying? Devontae Adams is on a trajectory to get to the Hall of Fame, right? Yeah. Tim, Tim Brown is a guy who was a born Raider. That's kind of how sports were back in the day. It's different. You know what I mean? Like my thing with Devontae Adams, I love Devontae Adams, man. Yeah, but at yeah. the end of the day, it's about the, the the team as a whole. And if it doesn't fit into the construct of what we have, he's on a different timeline than Max Crosby and yeah. Jack Jones and yeah. Nate Hobbs and all these young dudes. Yeah. He's in a way different timeline. So I can see him not being here in two years. And if he's not, he's not. 
But I'm going to be 100% real with you. If you guys think that Jaden Daniels, without having a strong draft class behind him that year and the year after and the year after, is just going to be the only thing that we need, that's not how it works. That's not how it works. So if you got to give up the farm, if I got to give up my first and my second for the foreseeable future, there's a g- damn good chance that he won't have what he needs. Yeah. No, facts, man. And I think, and I've seen a lot of, you know, stuff in the comment section. I'm going to say this, you know, Devontae Mann is, is one of the greatest wide receivers in the league. He's a first ballot Hall of Famer. He's going to go down as one of the greatest wide receivers of all time. But at the end of the day, there's only one player, and we've said this uh, numerous times, that we want, like, I feel like if we won one in the next five years, the, there's only one player that I hope that's still on this roster, and it's Max Crosby. Like, I want to win regardless, even if Max does move on, which it's not going to happen. I think he'll be a Raider for, forever. But that's just the one player that it would hurt seeing him leave and he didn't win with us. I've seen it too many times, man. Charles Woodson leaves. The GOAT goes to Green Bay, wins one. You know, Tim Brown never got an opportunity to get one with us. You know what I mean? At the end of the day, you want to see Max be that guy that can win one with us. But I think Devontae, man, in the next year or so, you may have to start thinking if we can pick up some assets, especially you guys, if we move a bunch of draft picks to go up to get Jaden Daniels and it fails, you have an asset in Devontae Adams where you can move on and potentially pick up some extra draft capital to kind of try, you know, free up, you know, take a little bit less of that pressure off of moving on from that much draft capital to get Jaden Daniels. But but you know that the funny thing, Graf, and, and you, you pay attention to nothing that people say and everything that they do. Tom Telesco, or some of you would like to call him Coupon Tom, he don't overpay for assets, man. Mm. He, he The Coupon Tom don't do that, man. Yeah. That guy will sit there. He will sit in the position he's at. He'll try to um, use whatever leverage he has to benefit himself. He, I don't think Tom Telesco is the guy that's going to spend big on a guy that he's not sure whether he's going to be good or not. Yeah, and and great, great general managers usually don't. I mean, you watch how New England made, you know, waves and won all those champion championships. They didn't go out and spend a shit ton of money on everybody. If anything, people were taking pay cuts to keep that team together in order to win Super Bowls. The Chiefs, they're paying a massive amount of money to Patrick Mahomes. They let Tyreek Hill, the, the probably the best wide receiver in the league, walk, and they won a championship. Like, you have to know when to spend and when not to spend. I think Christian Wilkins was the right move, but I love what he did after that was Okay, let's kick back a little bit. We made our splash move. Let's not let's not be reckless and irresponsible with the money we have left. Let's hold on to some of it because some other players will be available post June first with some of those cuts, and then we can make some more headway and bring in some guys. You know what I'm saying? But at the end of the day, man, great general managers don't go out there and just throw money all over the place and get rid of draft capital. Yeah, there's a few teams that's done. It. The Rams have done it in the past. Move on from draft capital, and they won one. It, it, to be real with you, though, they didn't end up getting that one wasted. A lot of those guys, I think Sean McVay would be gone. He'd be gone. They're they're the only team I've ever seen that hadn't won in a long time that went all in like that and actually won one. Yeah. The only other time I remember someone doing that and it worked, but this was an organization who wins all the time was the 49ers the year they won with Steve Young. When they went and got Gary Plummer and all of them. The Chargers that year in the Super Bowl. Yeah, when they went and got Dion and everything like that. They're the only team I ever remember going all in like this and winning. They had all of those guys, right? Yeah, uh, Ken Norton Jr. and you know they they, went had, all- they, they had a fucking that, that that was just a that like, was that was ridiculous. It was an all star team. Ricky running waters. Yeah, Martin uh, Hanks and all those boys. They, they had they had Hanks, a squad. Yeah. They had a squad. <laughs> but you know the funny thing about the the the, the Loch Ness the Loch Neck monster. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> What's next? <laughs> <laughs> no, nah, but but yo, the thing about Christian Wilkins to me, where I don't view it from the prism of them swinging big, is that. Christian Wilkins is the kind of guy that's never available. Guys like that get franchised, and then when you actually get them in free agency, they're just about to make their ascension down. Yeah. You get a chance to go get a superstar player, top three, four guy at his position in his early 20s, you do it. Yeah. And that's why Tom Telesco spent the kind of money. Some people say it's a bad contract. They're stupid. It's a great contract. But also, guess what else that move did? It made your best player on your roster even better. It made Max Crosby that much better. So it's a collaborative move, right? It helped out everything, right? Yeah. Now, the difference the difference between what we're saying as far as like not hamstrunging your organization is the fact that, man, listen, the Raiders at this point have not really, really been able to stockpile talent at positions because of the fact that we've had five, six, seven years, 10 years of bad drafts. For us, more so than any other team, 
draft capital is at a premium for us. Yeah. It really is because we yeah. got to get it right. Yeah. Salute to Jason, man. My brother is in the building. Salute to you, King. Salute to everybody also here in the building, man. Make sure you wipe them feet, hit them thumbs up. Salute to Order on a $5 donation as well. Appreciate you, brother. Salute to Chris. Fans draft by heart and media. We need to draft by logic and team meet. Man, bro, say that again, Chris. Fans draft by the heart and media. We need to draft by logic and team meet knees golly that's a haymaker man and salute to my brother jason come on man sure. 20 yes, new olv raiders network membership salute to my motherfucking dog bro i appreciate you brother salute to the thousand plus people in the building you already know what time it is man whether you're watching on wasted's channel my channel or on twitter just hit that thumbs up you guys it helps what we do and also if you have not yet wasted also has a membership go over there hit that join button and uh, support our brother over there as well man salute to jason man to go and let me know bro if you're still free uh tonight man for a cigar i definitely want to meet up with my guy and uh go get one man salute to all the new members also because of jason and if you guys want to become a member and you missed out on those 20 hit the link it's pinned up top on both channels best way to support what we do over here man get some questions in you guys let's talk about it the tom brady shit was gonna be quick fast and we got that out of there man That's there, there is nothing listen to yeah. tom brady things uh, do you even want a 47 year old quarterback? No, not at all. Do you not at all. Want that that has done everything, has nothing to prove. You know, the, the, a 47 year old quarterback most likely won't play a whole year. It, it is funny. Like when you look at what the Jets have going on with Aaron Rodgers, who's a lot younger than Tom Brady, you know, it, it's, it's going to be a wing and a prayer for him to get through the whole season, brother. He said, I got 24 U2 in Detroit and I'm down, bro. And salute the cap. Five. Raider Nation Unlimited, man. Waste of talent membership. Salute to my guys. And oh, if you guys, yeah. once again, like Jason said, if you guys are in the Detroit area, make sure you hit your brothers, man. We would love to hang out with you guys and uh, and kick it out there in the D, man. Real talk. Let me see. Yeah, I mean, look, Martin, the thing is this, bro. It, it, I said it just a second ago. If if last year was the time to bring him in, it didn't happen, you move on. At the end of the day, it makes no sense at all. There's no ties to Luke Getzey. There's no ties to him at all. At the end of the day, let him be part owner, minority owner, and, and let him, you know, help Aiden O'Connell and, and, and help these guys develop their games behind the scenes. But I don't think there's any reason for him to even be a football player at this point. He's too old, man. Uh, salute to Hug, man, my dog, the GOAT, man, GOAT, the the the, the mod father, man, him and Top Beats, man, salute to my guys, man, salute to you and salute to all the five new members in the building. Get some questions in, you guys. Let's have some fun. Uh, salute to Brave. Report just came down as Eagles looking up to get an OT. Would you trade down with them and what will we get back? I definitely would. I definitely would. I mean, you're going to lose that potential tackle right there, Brave, that you would take at 13, right? But there's still going to be some sneaky tackles available there in the 20s. It, it, bro, if you could pick up an extra second from Philly, why not? Do they have a second? If they have an extra second, yeah, I would it, definitely it, it, it depends on how far you're moving down, too, right? Well, they have like 22, 23 range, right? somewhere around there. I, I don't know what that is. Nine picks, right? So are you losing out on, you know, like 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 Joe Joel will be going, right? And um, but are you are are you losing out on the kid from Penn State? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's the thing, because some of these guys are going to be foundational pieces in, in years to come, especially when it comes to these offensive linemen, man. I think I think this is going to be one of those drafts we're going to look back on and commemorate the fact that you're going to have a bunch of all pro guys playing in the trenches from this particular draft. Yeah. Man, salute, man. All right, guys, you get the content here and no clicks, graphic and waste of the goats out here in these streets. Salute to our brother Rod Gas out there in Mexico. Salute to Hafi as well, man, on the five dollar donation. If we can't get Daniels, then I think we have to trade Tay, get two more picks this year, and build the run game. No, nah, because at that point, you move on from your best player on the offensive side of the football. You're just leaving another massive hole that you have to fill, and, and then you, you, you're hoping that one of these wide receivers in this year's class can get it done for you. And you're gonna have to take one early, Hafi. You you can't expect a, a, a wide receiver in that third, fourth round range. To, to make up for the production that Devontae gives you. Uh, look, at the end of the day, Devontae is going to be a Raider. You keep him and hold on to him for another year. If everything fails this year, you have an asset to move on, and you can use that to potentially move up in next year's draft to get your quarterback if you don't identify one this year. You know what I'm saying? So I personally wouldn't do it. What do you, what do you think about that, man? Yeah, I, I, th I think you're absolutely right. Look, look, you you can't sell a season out at that point. You know what I mean? Like the, the the economics of football are always in play, right? So if you don't go and make a splash with a quarterback, the only thing that's going to make people come in the building is this defense and Devontae Adams. There's no way Mark Davis allows that to happen. No, not at all. 
Um, and, and it's funny because we said that he's a hands-off owner, but I think that there's one thing that you have we, we can all agree on, right? There's one guy on the offensive side of the football that you're going to have to give us a shit ton of draft capital to get him, and then there's one guy on the defensive side of the football that's untouchable. So I agree with you. I think Mark at that point would have to step in. He may even say, damn, did I make a mistake bringing in Tom Telesco, moving on from Devontae Adams? You know what I'm saying? Like, like I, I, don't, I, I don't think that's even a thing. Um, the, the only way you can move on for Devontae Adams is if, is if Brandon Ayuk follows him in. Reese, yo. man, Reese, get the f out of here with that. Yo, Reese, I swear, bro, I, I, I love Reese Rock so much, and I don't know what the fuck he be saying ninety nine point nine percent of the time, but I love him though. Reese is hilarious. He says, I'm gifting D's nuts. Creators, my guy, Reese. Hey, Reese, did they get at you today? <laughs> did, they, did they get at you today? Salute the trip, uh, trip, man. Drake May and McCarthy look like bust to me. It's too early for that trip. You can't say that. You know what I mean? One. Played in North Carolina last year. Didn't really have a great team around him. You know what I mean? And then the other one, McCarthy, won a national championship. So I, I, it's too early to call anybody a bust. But I see, I see what you say. You said look like bust to me. It's only you, you got to see. What does the bust look like? You got to see. What does the bust look like? That, that's the funny thing. Like people say they look like a bust, right? Then you, you, you when Johnny Manziel was coming out, oh, man, Johnny Manziel, we need to move up and get him. Yeah. Oh, we need to get, we get Johnny Manziel, Johnny football. Get him, get him to Gruden. Like, come on, y'all. We don't know what they look like. They haven't even taken a snap in the NFL. Get out of here with that. <laughs> yo, would anybody tell you that Brock Purdy looks like he's going to be a, a, a an all-pro? Nobody would tell you that, right? People used to say that Josh Allen was going to be a bust. People used to say that Joe Burrow, you know, wasn't ever going to, you know, do anything. And he, he's a flash in the pan. Dude, let these guys get out here and play the game first. A lot of people didn't even say Patrick Mahomes was going to be a bust because they didn't even know who the hell he was coming out of Texas Tech. So, you know, I mean, we, we got to get some of these guys. And like, and once again, too, like we always say, it's a matter of where you go. It's a matter of where you are. The, 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 the personnel that you have around you, the coaching staff, in order, they, they're the ones that are responsible to get these guys right and have their careers be long and illustrious. People, places, and things, bro. Yeah. And, and the problem with coaches nowadays, and, and I'm, I'm going to say this, man. There are a lot of coaches that are not ho coaching. They try to put everything and the onus on just the players. Whatever happened to you taking a player and moving them from one place and, and, and getting the most out of said player? Yeah. Whatever happened to that? Whatever happened, and the, the onus never goes on the coaching staff. It never goes on the organization. It never goes on the ownership. It's always just the player, and nobody ever looks at all the peripheral things around them that they need to make them successful. I mean, there's a few quarterbacks that we brought in that were that were afterthoughts that got us to some Super Bowls and actually won us a Super Bowl or two. So you know, what I mean, like that's the thing that we got to realize is you know, remember Rich Gannon was at he was at the end of his career. We brought him in, and you know, people were like, ah, oh, he's just he'll be like a, a bridge guy at this point coming in. What he do? You know what I mean? He helped, he helped turn this franchise around. Bless you. Thank you know you. what I mean? So, yeah. And, and, and you know what's funny? When you talk about Rich Gannon, you talk about the end of his career. His The beginning of his career wasn't that great. At all. He was Minnesota, a journeyman. Minnesota, this Minnesota, guy Minnesota. Was the bitch behind Wade Wilson. Yeah. Like, come on, bro. Yeah, Wade, high stakes, Wilson, baby. Salute the first and goal, Raider, my guy. I see you, my brother. Appreciate you. It's funny. I see That's me in the default picture. That's hilarious, yo. Salute to my guy. Look, look like you guys are in Disney World too, which is crazy. We're in Vegas. So, uh, hey, first thing, I could have you from Tennessee, right, brother? I could have swore we had a conversation in front of uh, uh, the burger spot. I could have swore we we was kicking it for a second. Salute to my guy. Uh, salute to Matt Marinovich, my dog. I see you in the building, man. Salute. To <laughs> you know what he said, "I didn't even see that." He said, "He said wasted." I know you know what a bus looks like. Bang zoom. <laughs> zoom. Bang zoom. Sorry. Hey. A, a bust, definitely. You yes, know, that's right. We, I love the bust. We've thing. talked about our guy and, and, and his, his obsession. Uh, uh, you know, with with the with the milk duds. Salute to pillaging just for fun on a ten dollar donation. First time in a while, I catch you guys live. Can't wait for the draft. Watching from Guam on my thirty eighth birthday. Salute to you. Happy birthday, brother and Raiders. That's right, oh, God man. Salute right. Appreciate you. Salute to Guam. Happy birthday, brother. Happy birthday to our guy, man. Let me see. Um, yeah, Timmy was in the Super Bowl with us. He, he he lost the Super Bowl. He didn't win one with us. Yeah, yeah. That was the the bad, the bad, 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 bad. It was um, a bad batch. It was a bad batch, man. Yeah, they they showed us down the river, man. Bill Callahan. Yeah, man. It's just nasty work. Effing, effing Callahan. F that guy. Yeah, I, I mean, I agree with you, man. It's too early to call anybody a bust at this point. And that's one thing I'm going to bring up to Mitch tomorrow when I'm on his show is he keeps saying that Bo Nix is going to be a bust at the next level. How? 
How? We, we don't know that. We don't know that. We're going to have some fun. Oh, it's going to be a bust. Um, hey, you're having to drink a boot right now. Stick a thumb <laughs> up. I'm going to stick a carrot up Jeremy Chugs' ass right now. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck out of here, bitch. <laughs> Yo, salute to Oregon. Thanks, so much. Thanks so much. Keep it simple and plain. Draft the right tackle. I agree. Then trade back in a second if Penix is there. And if not, a right guard. And then fill the holes. Pause if necessary. Is needed. Don't overthink this draft. Please. Factory, brother. Factory, factory, factory. I'm all for going right tackle um in, in, at 13 i'm gonna, I'm gonna keep it but like to be real that that's kind of where i am right now order like that's where i think we're gonna go and to be real with you i think that's where we should go if one of those top quarterbacks aren't available at 13 just just go get your anchor on the right side could you imagine having it like remember Derek carr looked so great in 2016 also because of him but also that offensive line man we had a great old line. man Hutt. fletchy huddy uh, like, before, we had a we had a massive pen like, and, and cake it, and yo, you could have a guy like Howard being out there and not being the greatest, but he was a big motherfucker. Though. Howard from the Jets, yeah, yeah, yeah he was a big dude. So he, he played well. Uh, he played well for us, though. Yeah, he did. He played. He played great because you had Pin Pen Cake it, yeah, you had Gabe. Oh, you had Kalechi. You had Huddy. So, oh, so if you have your left tackle, of the future in Colton Miller, you have your anchor on the right side. It's only a matter of time that 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 thing's going to come together and we can get that offense flowing, man. You know what I mean? So I, I'm cool with going uh, tackle. And that's a, that's one right there, Guru. That's the big question, right? If Penix is available at 13, do you take a Fawaga or one of those top JC Lathams over a Michael Penix Jr.? It's only if, you know, these guys know more than us. They know we They're going to be calling every team in front of them trying to see what the hell is going on. So if they feel that Michael Penix is still going to be available at the end of the first and they think that he can be the guy, and maybe we do trade back up to go get him. I don't know, but I love Michael Penix. And everybody knows that Wasted is a huge fan of Michael Penix Jr. Also, I wouldn't be, I would love him at 13 if that's where we go. But I think that we get a right tackle. I truly think, and I think that we try and go get one of those. If Penix is available in the second round, I mean, that, that's a no brainer at that point. Yeah. You know what I mean? But I think more, I, you have to move up to get him in a second. Yeah. But more realistically, man, I, I think we're going to be looking at the, the Spencer Rattlers of the world. Potentially a Bo Nix if he's available in the second round. Spencer Rattler, the Red Rocket. Hey man, you just you never know, man. You never know. I, it yo, man, I make, yo, a guy named Rattler in the middle of the desert. I'm trying to tell you, man. The the the, the, the snake, two, snake snake two point Snake two point yeah. Hey, why not, man? Devin, in a perfect world, bro, that would be great. Ended up with Fuaga or Penix, and I like Guyton too. I like Tyler Guyton as well. That's another guy, Castro, that we could potentially look at. He may. To be real with you, he may be available at the beginning of the second round because there's so much be. there's so much talent at, at, at the tackle position. He may fall to the second round. So how would you feel if if, if we took Penix at 13 and then got Tyler Guyton in the second round? It's still a win-win. Yeah. And, and listen, Sanji seems to like Guyton. Yeah. Sanji yeah. loves him. He well, loves, Sanji loves every offensive line. Let me tell you, he, he, this <laughs> might be the best right tackle in the draft. <laughs> Yo, we, stop, we stop fucking imitating everybody. Man. Oh, brother, man, saying G, and he will be on the show uh, this week at some point too. You guys, we we had a little scheduling conflict. You got a lot going on, and uh, but he will be on the show here very, very soon. I promise you. <laughs> um, salute to Pillage and just for fun. Which strategy are you guys more comfortable with? Well, I get thirteen and fill all the needs and sell the farm next year, or trade up and try to get JD five or Penix at thirteen. I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let Big Bro take this one. Bro, if, if a quarterback falls in your lap outside of the top 10, you take him. Yeah. Especially if he's one of the top four or five guys at his position. Because yeah. there, there, there's like about there's about 10 linemen in this draft that give or take the situation they go into, you don't know who has the highest ceiling. I think for for, for Shanu from Penn State, mm -hmm. Joe All. Yeah, you know what I'm saying, and then Latham is a guy that's getting lost in the sauce. I think it's a, he got a little of the Alex Leatherwood stink on him because he's from Alabama. Yeah. But those three guys, man, they can and 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 then Fuaga too. Like you got like there's about how many guys you think for you, man, that you draft? Because it, it, for me, there's not that many quarterbacks. There to me, no. there are only three or four guys that I can live with at quarterback. So yeah. I'm the quarterback. Especially, yeah. Well, there's three or four guys that I can live with in year one if he's the guy. There's maybe five guys in this draft that I I, I would be okay even if it's in the middle rounds to bring in and develop. You know what I mean? Yeah. So uh, he said he said wasted said fuck the big three. It's just big me. <laughs> Salute to Central man. Salute to my guy. This time of year, hence 
drop and it's high. Time we pay attention. Kraft had a regret, made it publicly known. We know the price for three includes Myers. Trade up. So you're saying he made a mistake with not bringing in Jacoby Myers, which he wanted to stay in New England, right? And they wouldn't offer him that extra million dollars, I believe. So you're saying pretty much, you know, send up a bunch of a future uh, first and a bunch of futures and give them a, a Myers. Once again, that opens up another slot, another uh, another hole that you need to fill in this in this year's draft. You know what I mean? So, but I mean, hey, we'll see who's available at three. I don't think that they're going to move up for a Drake May. I don't think we're going to move up for a JJ McCarthy. I think there's one guy, and that's Jaden Daniels, that they want to move up for. I think other than that, they're they're comfortable sitting back and saying, if Michael Penix is there on the board, maybe maybe we look his way. But I don't I don't think that we would move up unless Jaden Daniels is available on the board. What you're laughing? Bro, I'm just thinking about like with with uh with Robert Kraft was on that show talking about he should have never got I should have never traded Myers. Yeah, he said I had baby oil all over me <laughs> <laughs> in a strip mall. <laughs> Yo, he's still <laughs> there. So to eleven, my guy, man, Colton Parm, James Mumford, and Fawaga. Then AOC quarterback one with an experienced OC gets the offense. How do y'all feel about that? I mean, realistically, can I be real with you, eleven? That shit don't sound good at all. I'll be real with you. It sounds kind of scary knowing that you're going to go into this year with Max heading into his prime, with Devontae already at you know that 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 point in his career to have you know. AOC is your QB1. It's a little nerve wracking. I'd have to see it before I get excited about it. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'd have to see what it looks like in training camp. I have to see what that looks like um, potentially in, in, in preseason. I can't really call that. Right now on paper, I'm going to be real. That, that doesn't really sound too good. It doesn't. I like Mumford a lot, though. I do think that he'll get a look at right guard, but I think we're still going to get an upgrade at the guard position in this year's draft. I do. We're going to draft another one and, and have a Mumford fight it out, battle it out for right tackle and right guard. But that don't look too well for me on paper right now. I'm going to be real. But I'd have to see it. I'm just saying going off of what it looks like, that don't really sound too sexy to me. Salute to George, man. Hell of a QB year in 1968. Makes me wonder what might have happened with Eldridge Dickey if Al didn't want to rush him on the field as a wide receiver. God, George Manley went back in the – Yeah, he talking about before we were even twinkles. You know right. what I'm saying? <laughs> back in the day day. In the day day, right? You know. Eldridge Eldridge Dickey, right, is is a guy who him and Joe Gilliam are two guys that you got to wonder whether they could have ushered in the running quarterback back in the 60s and 70s. Jefferson Street, Joe Gilliam with the Steelers. So, you know. Yeah, that's just funny. Salute the trip on the $2 donation. I'm going to follow up on his super win. Can you wear a Penix jersey outside? (laughs) It's nasty work out here in these streets. I'm cool on that, bro. Yeah, I have to have his full name on the back of the jersey, bro. Yeah, M. Penix. Yeah, or just MPJ or you know but I mean? it, it, it's more Penix. <laughs> if you put M Penix on there, so you can not It's nasty work out here. It's terrible, bro. Salute the hug. He says super chat started started drinking early today. <laughs> salute the hug. Uh, let me see. Salute to Ben uh, Ben James. What up, Raider fam? Salute to you, man. Wipe them feet, y'all. Hit them thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, man, make sure you hit that subscribe button on both channels. Raider JP says. Uh, and any may actually uh, accept our 2024 first and second round and a 2025 first to get their third pick. It's going to cost more than that, brother. Yeah, bro. And I'm not giving away three three years of first round picks pretty much because you're not really giving three because you're getting the one to get the guy you want at that draft. But then the next two, because like, bro, look, it all depends, right? I don't think that the Washington commanders can resist taking Jaden Daniels. I, like with the more I think about it, I I don't see them taking Drake May. Not with this new organization. Not with this new owner. Not with Magic Johnson and Bob Myers and all. They want somebody that's going to electrify that fan base and put butts in the seat. And Drake May ain't it. I'm gonna be real, bro. I, I think at this point, they may value JJ McCarthy over Drake May. And I, I've had Drake May going to the Commanders for a long time. I think he's going to be one of the better quarterbacks in this year's draft. It's going to take some time to get him right. But I think he's going to be one of the ones. But I think, man, keep an eye on them with J.J. McCarthy. Now, they got some visits next week, I believe, with all the top guys. I like J.J. McCarthy better than Drake May. Yeah, I know, I know you do. I know you do. But I'm saying that that's, that's one name to keep an eye on with the Commanders because, you know, you just never know. And Adam Peters, to me, just J.J. McCarthy looks like a, a, a Adam Peters guy. Like, like, I think he would want to bring in that all-American – I just, I don't know why, bro. I have this weird nagging suspicion that he would try to sell the whole J.J. McCarthy thing to- so they have a QB room that's like point break and shit like that? 
Hey man, I'm hey, saying Johnny Utah quarterback and shit. But then, but then if Drake May falls, then you're looking at Minnesota. They're probably going to trade up and say, "Oh, we can't wait. We got to go get our guy." You know what I mean? And but then the air raid quarterback, though, right? The air raid guy is Jay Daniels. That's yeah. the guy who's played some air raid concepts. That's a guy Cliff Kingsbury can work with. Uh, Cliff Kingsbury likes guys who are mobile. Not saying that JJ McCarthy isn't mobile, but one of those things, man, that Cliff Kingsbury values is a guy who can take off and get you a couple of first downs. Get you 20, 30 yards with his legs. Yep. I don't know if J.J. McCarthy is going to be that kind of a guy. Well, we shall see, man. Salute to 718 Raider. Jaden Daniels is meeting with the Vikings again in private. Facts. The Vikings need a quarterback, y'all. Sam Darnold is their bridge guy. Uh, they just drafted a young pup out of BYU last year, and it didn't work out with him in his rookie season. Um, you know, I, I think personally, man, keep an eye on Minnesota, man. I think they are going to move up to the top five and try to get secure a Drake May or a J.J. McCarthy. And at that point, it's it's going to be interesting to see if any team in front of us goes up and takes Michael Pennis because they start feeling the pressure of, damn, all the quarterbacks are gone. You know what I mean? Like, you got to keep an eye on Denver. You know what I mean? You have to. I know Michael Pennix may not look like the traditional Sean Payton kind of guy, but I'm going to be real, man. I think I think Michael Pennix may would be, would, be, would be a dog out there in Denver, bro, if they had the right t- pieces I around. I, I think he'll get fucked up in Denver. They don't well, that line, they, they're going to have to get that line together for that sure. That line is terrible. See, the thing with Michael Pennix Jr. is I think he can be a great quarterback in this league if he goes to the right place. Right. With us, he's great. Yeah. Him going to a place where he's getting beat on, because even though Michael Pennix has really great straight line speed, a lot of people think that he, he's not going to be able to deal with that pressure you know, uh, if he's running for his life all the time. He has very great straight line speed, but he's a guy who wins from the pocket. And if there's no pocket to be spoke of, that might be a little different, man. Might yeah. be a little different. Yeah, facts. Rich has graphed with, with doing that. I think good talent falls to us. I mean, hey, man, to be realistic, you guys, the more, you know, the more um, quarterbacks that go off the board, you know what I mean? It, it's definitely going to lead to a lot more talent dropping to us at 13 at that point. You have to take best player available. You just can't just look at the quarterback position. Right. You know what I mean? I mean, keep it a buck, man. A lot of there's some of these edge rushers that's supposed to be going in the top 10 that may be available there because of the run on quarterbacks and the run on receivers. Those are the two positions, the top 10, the neighbors of the world, the Romes, the uh, uh the Marvin Harrison Jr., then that quarterback run, bro. That might be the whole 10. You may that be looking at a lot right. too. You may be looking at a Dallas Turner that's available at 13, and then you're thinking. Holy shit, man. Malcolm Koontz has one more year left on his deal. Tyree Wilson is still not developed into the guy we thought he would be yet. It's still early. But you may have to think about some things there at 13. If last two Dallas was- Turner is going to be gone, bro. He's going to Atlanta. Atlanta I think he is too. I, but I'm just saying. They, you- they, they need a pass rusher oh, like you like to put it on it. Yeah, yeah. No, they do. But I'm just saying they may value somebody else over Dallas Turner. They, they may look at lot two or they may look at one of those other guys or Jared yeah. Verse out of Florida State. Like, that's the guy that's we want. That's and then- a- and then you never know. So there's going to be so much talent. This is the good problem to have, you guys. The problem is this. We don't know if we have our quarterback, right? We don't know what the fuck Aiden O'Connell is. We don't know what Gardner, if we brought him in to be the guy th- this year to be the bridge. We don't know. But I'll tell you this. In terms of any other uh, other position, I think we're okay because there's going to be so much talent available at 13. You can fill the cornerback hole. You can fill the right tackle position. There's so much talent that's going to be available at 13. I'm excited, man. So you know who else can fill the cornerback hole? Penix! <laughs> oh, bang zoom! Bang <laughs> zoom! Me personally, Josh, I think that Quinn Yon Mitchell is the best corner in this class out of Toledo. But I think that our guys would actually take Terry and Arnold over Quinn Yon Mitchell. I think that um, they, they they like the guy. I think that, you know, they've already met with him at the pro day. They was having a conversation with him. That little snippet went viral of them talking on the sidelines. I have a weird, weird feeling that they like Terry and Arnold. But me personally, my favorite corner in this class is Quinn Yon Mitchell. I mean, you know what is crazy? Because it is, it's not missed on me that a guy like a Mike Penix Jr. could actually fall to the Raiders. Yeah. He really could because if you really look at it, right? The ascension of Drake May changes, not Drake May, the ascension of J.J. McCarthy changes the dynamic of this draft. Yeah. One, Chicago, definitely Caleb. Two, Jaden Daniels. Three, could be J.J. McCarthy. Right. Yeah. So now you got a Drake May. You got Minnesota moving up into a place and grabbing him. You got Marvin Harrison Jr. You got Malik Neighbors, who was going to go to the Giants probably because they need a wide receiver. You, 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 you got, I'm telling you, you got a lot of guys, man. Like, you know, Leitu, all of these guys, 
you because you have teams who need pass rushers. And then if you look at the Tennessee Titans, they have never replaced freaking Taylor Luan. They're definitely taking a tackle. Yeah. So if you look at the first few picks, bro, it, yo, it's it's not missed on me, bro. It ain't hey, missed on me. Real quick, I want my phone's going crazy on Oak Las Vegas. Salute to Demarcus, salute to John, and salute to Jeremy and Jeff. All my guys that went over there buying merch on OakLasVegas.com. I, I want to tell you guys I appreciate you so much for the support. You guys are definitely the best, man. All your stuff is on the way. I just hit the bu uh, send button. You guys are good to go. Thank you so much. Uh, do you think New England will trade the third pick for our first and second this year in the original copy of the unreleased Wu-Tang album in a loaded EBT card? <laughs> so I look like a, a damn solid trade. You got to throw in a, a chopped cheese and a grape CNC. Hey, man, and, and we may be good to go. I don't think that they take that personally, but, you know, I, I definitely would. If I can get that my hands on the unreleased Wu-Tang Album man, and, 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 and look, I don't think y'all understand. I grew up on EBT, man. There's nothing like a loaded EBT card. It and if you get GA on it, see, there's there's two things. See, see, when you come up in the trenches, there's two sides of that EBT card. There's the food and there's the GA. If you get the assistance with the cash on it, too, it's a win-win pillaging. Salute to my guy. Go, uh, buy, go buy you some cereal in the bag. Yeah, <laughs> some exactly. kabooms or something. You know what I mean? And he got me dying right here. Look. <laughs> oh wow bang zoom hey aj we, we can't go off of this bro we, we can't do that because look at the end of the day what school did jerry rice go to wasted mississippi valley state what 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 school did malcolm Kuntz go to when he's finally hitting his stride buffalo okay Tariq woolen you know what i mean uh san antonio to i believe san, was it san antonio tulsa i believe or not tulsa san antonio tech uh, it's um, um, utep utep right so uh, there's a lot of talent that come from these smaller schools. We got to stop thinking like that, AJ. Just because he went to a smaller school doesn't mean that he's not going to be a great. Where did Max Crosby go? Yeah, right. He's in Michigan. Like, bro, we, we can't think like that, AJ. Who would have thought a fifth round guy, Max Crosby, coming out of a small school in the Midwest, would be the one of the best pass rushers in the NFL? We got to stop thinking like that, bro. Small schools have a lot of talent. I understand you, you, you're thinking, well, you know, they didn't play against a lot of talent, man. We got to stop thinking like that. That kid stood out at Toledo. He was a phenomenal talent there. And I think he's going to be a great talent the next level. Uh, come on. Let, let, let's just really look at some of the guys that are in this league right now or guys that are in the Hall of Fame like T.O. Yeah, there you go. Chattanooga. Oh, Chattanooga. Come on, dog. Nah. Yeah, man. Salute to Ira, man. One of the goats also, man. Just gifted five OLV Raiders Network membership. Salute to our guy, Ira Jackson. A great and powerful Ira Jackson. Fact raining me. down on us all. Shout Salute. out to him, bro. Salute to my guy, man. Uh, let me see. Where did Nick uh, Morrow go? Greenville in Illinois. My cousin was on the same team. as him. Well, I, I don't want to go Nick, Nick Morrow because, you know, he ain't really... He ain't been that one. We, we're not talking about a super. We're talking about superstars, bro. Nick no, Khalil Mack, too. I mean, we're talking about Buffalo, right? I mean, shit. I mean, Khalil Mack, one of the best pass rushers. He'll be a Hall of Famer at some point. So we, we got to just stop thinking that small schools don't bring great talent. You know what I mean? Like, year in and year out, guys from small schools get drafted and end up being phenomenal talents. You know what I mean? We, we got to stop thinking like that. Bro, you got to understand something. With the advent of technology, if there's a player out there, he will not be lost in the shuffle. If you can play football, you will get your opportunity. Yeah. It ain't like back in the day where people would just get lost in the shuffle. No, they find and they going no stone unturned. They yeah. over there bringing jokers that's playing rugby. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. you know, come on now. Did you get a chance to watch a little bit of that uh, Christian Wilkins interview with uh, Eric Armstead on, I think it's the, was it yeah. third and long? or, or Yeah, I what, yeah I watched it. You guys haven't got an opportunity yet, man. Go check out um, our new superstar defensive tackle on Eric Armstead's uh, channel. He just started a podcast uh, it's a smaller channel right now. It's still growing. I think he's about a thousand uh, subscribers, but he has a few uh, videos uploaded. He's trying to get more on the, the media side of things. Go check it out, man. It was actually phenomenal, man. Christian Wilkins is a dog. When they say there's certain guys that fit the Raider mold, he fits the Raider mold. Max Crosby fits the Raider mold. Devontae Adams fits the Raider mold. Josh Jacobs did fit the Raider mold. This is a guy that fits, like, like the way he, he approaches the game, the way he, he, he gave... Eric Armstead is flowers, you know, on helping him become the player that he is. If you guys have not gotten an opportunity yet, man, please, please, please go check out that interview. Christian Wilkins, we are in for a ride. Hopefully, hopefully he can stay healthy, which he has up to this point in his career. But I think, man, Waze, I think we got, we got one, bro. We got one, bro. Like we got one. You know what I mean? And, and that defensive line was phenomenal. You know, mid to the end of the year last year, they started really getting to the quarterback. It's only a matter of time that this is going to end up being a top three, top five unit um, in the NFL, man, on the defensive line. Salute to Ira once again, my dog, man. The great and powerful Ira Jackson.
Yeah, man. Salute yeah. to you, brother. Man, okay. Ira, Ira came through and blessed the channel, man. Appreciate you, brother. Salute to all the new members. If you guys want to become a member, hit the link up top and also go over to Waste's channel and hit that join button on his memberships as well, man. Salute, Ira. I appreciate you, brother. You did say, I remember he said he, he was on Mitch's show the other day. He said, When you going live, I want to come through and bless you a little bit. I said, Man, I'll be live. I was supposed to go live tonight. I ended up not because I had some other stuff going on. But Ira, I just want to say thank you, brother. I really truly appreciate that's, that's you, a real one right there. Yeah, what you do for me and my brother, bro. Like you really, you really keep the lights on over here, man, with, with the algorithm, man. Real talk. And real quick, you guys, um, moving forward, it's gonna be me and wasted. Me and wasted. The algorithm. This is the movement. Just letting y'all know, this is the movement. We're going to have guests on. We're going to have a bunch of other people. It's, it, we love all of our guys from Shieldmore. We said it before, right? That, that without all the guys, Shieldmore is not Shieldmore. Moving forward, a lot of our guys are doing different things. This is it. Moving forward, you're going to see me and Wasted. That's it. So no shade to anybody. I hope everybody continues to grind. We love all our guys. Moving forward, this is it. So don't ask any questions of why is this guy not here? Why is this guy not here? Y'all moving forward. This is it. This is it. So Andy, Andy, Andy's the glue. We miss you, Andy. Andy's the glue. You know what I mean? And Big Mike is, is one of the brains behind the operation. Yes, sir. You know I mean? But everybody's doing their own thing and their personal lives and everybody's kind of stepping away from this thing. So I just want you guys to understand, don't ask any more questions, please, about why this person and that person. This is it. This is the movement moving forward. And we're going to, oh, you know, Stu. I mean, come on, man. Stu, 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 is, Stu has his own segment. You know what I'm saying? Like when, when Stu pops up and says, let's go live, we, he has his own stick, his own segment. So, you know what I mean? But just a heads up, you guys, moving forward, it's algorithm. Um, Shilmore, love all our guys, love all our brothers. That thing is over with. If it's not all Shilmore, I said this a while ago, but now I'm, 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 I'm double back and I'm telling everybody real quick. It's a wrap. It is a wrap. This is the algorithm moving forward. Um, let me see, man. Salute to Bean. <laughs> Bean Bagger. <laughs> Bean is hilarious, bro. Oh, my God. I don't know what channel you became a member on, brother, but thank you so much, man. And that's a cold, cold default picture as well, man. Salute to my God. Salute to second members. Uh, this includes the simulcast during the season. Yes. Yes. Definitely, man. Definitely. So moving forward, I don't know if um, – I can't get wasted on, 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 on live stream for the game. I, I hate doing those. <laughs> he, he feels like it's like a, he, he's superstitious and shit. You know what I'm saying? So, but um, I will be doing the games during the season. I promise you. I'll still be around uh, doing that, man. Salute to Alex. You guys are the dynamic duo. I enjoy watching y'all and cheers to your future success. Thank you, brother. Thank you, man. Salute to Jack. Y'all still the Deadly Venoms of Shilmore. My dog, my dog. Um, salute to Mask80 also on becoming a member. My dude. And salute to Ira. Let the shit talk begin. Salute to you on the We appreciate you, brother. Salute to the 1,300 people in the building. Wipe them feet, y'all. Hit them thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button and pay your bar tabs over there at Wasted Talents channel as well. Salute to my guy Ira on the 20 piece special. Salute to KC. Great show. Be sure no co uh, no curveballs. Trey Wise are coming. If I had to be a betting man, KC, I think it's a very, very slim chance that we make a move in terms of the trade market. I don't think I don't think there's really any reason to. I think most of the players that we have on this roster are set in stone. I don't think we're moving on from anybody else. And I think that Tom wants to keep his draft capital. I don't think he wants this to be a thing wasted like where it was in year one, yeah. um, you know, with, with, with you know, a Ziegler where you don't have a first and second round pick. I think he wants to have a full draft class. I think he understands the severity of having a full draft class because of the books and how it moves and being able to develop your own guys. Yeah. Yeah, it look, man, the the, the modern era of football knows that trades really if you got to make a trade, that that's because you probably missed somewhere in the draft. Yeah. You know what I mean? So they're trying to establish the foundation of their program and the way you do that is by drafting well. You know what I mean? You don't you don't come out swinging oh, like right, that. Right back. You know, like I think the, the reason why the Raiders went that route with Ziegler and McDaniels was because they had what they thought was a franchise quarterback. So what they did was they pushed their chips to the table and they tried to fill around that franchise quarterback and build around him. Yeah. We don't have a franchise quarterback now. So now what you got to do is you got to really build this roster. Salute the brave, big graphic ways of new age outlaws. I'm, I'm, I'm an ass man. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, look, look, look. Nah, bro. We got to be the outsiders. I am not going to be the corny ass road dog. Oh, <laughs> you didn't know. Yo. The outsiders of the Steiner brothers or something, yo. Get out of here. I, I agree with you, Dan. I think I think the commanders are going to go Jaden Daniels. But I think a sleeper pick for them is 
the young kid out of Michigan, J.J. McCarthy, man. Salute to Steel Cage, my guy. We can't pass up on a Michael Penix at 13. Look, if he's there and we take him, I would love it. I would love it. I would not be against it. But I do believe that some of this smoke um, about us not trading up and or, or keeping Stan, Stan Pat at, thir at, at 13 and taking the tackle, I think that some of this smoke is true. I think it is. I, I think that Tom Telesco knows how he wants to build this team moving forward, and he understands that it's not a one-year thing to get a quarterback wasted. It's not a one-year thing. Like sometimes you have to stand pat to see. Tom Telesco wants to see what Aiden O'Connell can do, or 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 one of these guys. Well, well, bro. Like when you're not in a position to do something like that, then what are you gonna do? What are you gonna do when you're not in a position to do something like that, bro? And I'm, I'm gonna be a hundred percent real with you, bro. Aiden, it's not the fact that they got Aiden O'Connell. It's the fact that they went out and they went and got your boy. Um, Gardner Minshew. When they got Gardner Minshew, that let me know that they're okay with who they have in their quarterback room. Ira with the bang! bang! Word to Mitch, man. Salute to Ira, man. Shout My out to Ira, bro. Salute, man. A bang, bang, zoom. Back, back, bang here. Mask oh, bang. Mask 80. Bang! He said a boot of coffee. Ira, I got you. You know what? No, Ira. You know what I'm going to do? You know, you donated hundred dollars. I don't know if it's on waste or my, I don't care. Tomorrow I'm taking, I'm taking a few shots for our brother Ira and our brother mask for the two, for the hundred dollar donations, man. I got you Ira tomorrow. I'm going to drink some of that nasty ass whiskey that, uh, that Mitch and be drinking over there. That, uh, that, that cinnamon shit. <laughs> so I got you brother. Pre appreciate you, man. Salute the mask. Also, no matter what happens, Raiders all day. Every day, salute man, mask Eddie. I appreciate you, brother. Man, back to back haymakers with Ira once again, bro. And mask, I appreciate you. lights on over here, man. Yeah, Shout man, out to my god, man, definitely appreciate it, man. Salute to Alex. I hope y'all are together a long time, like Eddie and Martin's characters on the movie Life, the upper room. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, we no, definitely, I can honestly. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can honestly say, y'all, that, that me and Wasted are going to end up being those guys. Like, real talk. Like, yeah, I can yeah, honestly yeah. say that. Like, we're going to be at Yankee Stadium one day when the A's are there, yeah. and we're going to be sitting there old as shit, like, just, just talking mad shit. You know what I mean? So, just salute to Mask. I appreciate you. Oh, oh, it's coming, Steve. The thing is, man, we can't get Stu right now. He's hiding right now. Purdue lost that national championship to Connecticut. He's pissed. He has been off the grid. And he's been with family too, man. So I've been waiting on getting Stu. He hit me the other day, but he's been kind of avoiding yeah, social media. He's pissed. Yo, you know let me mean? ask you a question real quick. Basketball question. I heard Edie, people are saying that he might not even get drafted. Wait, who? The center from Purdue. What do you think about that? Uh, he'll get drafted. I think I think he, but Joe, you think it'll be a first round pick or second There's round? There's not a shit ton of talent at big in terms of big men in this year's draft. He'll go in the first round. He'll be a first the thing, round. The draft. thing about him that I that I noticed. Is he can't defend? You got fives now. I think he could fall because you got fives now. You got a guy like like Webinyani. Hey, I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. This kid is seven foot. What? It's seven foot eleven. That shit. Yo, he, he's a wing guy. You got the Joker shooting the three. Yeah. You got all of these centers. You got Sabonis playing the five, shooting the three, could bring the ball up. Like a guy like he, he he's an old school big man. I watched yeah, him. I, watched him I, saw what, I saw what UConn did to him. They just pick and roll them to yeah. death, and it was yeah. nothing he could do. He yeah. was just sitting there like, so I can't see him getting taken that high. I watched him live when they beat Michigan State for the Big Ten championship in Purdue, and I told Stu, I said, yeah, he, he ain't he he good at this level, but he ain't one of them ones. Yeah. You know what I mean? But he, he's a guy that yo back in the day in the nineties, you could throw the ball down to him. He can you know turn around, face the basket, get you some points. If need be, but he can't defend. They would kill him in the NBA, bro. That's yeah. what Miles Turner could even shoot the damn the three ball. Yep. The yep. big cat could mm -hmm. shoot the three. They they got A D with the Lakers playing the five sometimes. It's it, I don't know, man. It's gonna be rough for him, brother. Salute, man, to L V, our brother, man, in the building. My father gang. Salute to you. And also, man, salute to our brother Ridgeback in the building, also, man. Um, Ira. Oh, it's on the way, brother. It is on the way. Salute to you. I appreciate you, man, for grabbing one of those uh, cups from us, man. Appreciate Oh, you guys, Wasted's merch is on the way. I know we've said I've been saying it all year. No, 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 fuck that. Graph is saying it now, okay? <laughs> oh, because... yeah, you better finally help me out here. Oh, no, you because I told you. What, what, what was the conversation we had right before this live? I know. 
I know okay. with the merch. He's like, yo, you gotta get your merch going. Look, yeah, bro, yeah. I, got, I got all the designs and shit like that. It's just that you know, me, I'm a perfectionist, especially when it comes to gear. But you know, I'm just gonna put it out there. I gotta stop jerking around with this, man. Yeah, Salute. Ira is the def, the damn goat, man. We got no, we, we got, got, we got. Yo, get goat. off my lawn too. Get Yo. off my lawn is coming, bro. We have plural. We have goats in the chat. We have goats. Like I don't think y'all understand. With what, what, what we mean by that, man. We salute all you guys, man. Appreciate you. Uh, let me see. Uh, we do need to make some uh, get off my lawn shirts, though. That's facts. Yeah, get off my lawn. Yo, the, the thick frame thing has gone and come and gone, but I think it still has a market. The thick <laughs> frame <it> has a <laughs> Yo, get some questions in, you guys. We got about, we'll stick around for a little longer, man. We want to talk some Raiders football. You know what I mean? And Alex, they're coming, bro. We got the algorithm shirts. We got we got the uh, the shit ain't leather shirts. You know what I mean? We, we got we got some stuff brewing, man. You know what I mean? So so stay tuned, man. Uh, yeah, Ridge, he, he wilding right now. Pause. Jerking with his mark. Yeah, man. He's nasty work out here. In these that's shirts. right. That's right. That's right. Unceremoniously. That, that has to be a, a shirt right there. Unceremoniously blocked. Yeah, but I'm, I'm gonna be honest with you. That listen, it happens from time to time, guys. It gets a little lonely out there. You have to jerk your merc sometimes. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, bro. Hey, I, I want to ask you because are you going to do a final mock draft? No, you know, no, I wasn't planning on it. You know what I'm saying? Because it's, it's paralysis by analysis. Like, I do it, and it all, you know, I, I might. What I'm going to do is I'm going to write a final mock draft and put it on social media. I, if you want to do one on the air, we can. Well, let's but, do this. Let's not even do a final mock draft. If you had to pick five players in this draft that you can pretty much say, like, I think they're going to be a Raider, right? Like, like I think they're going to be a Raider. Who, who do you have? I think we all can agree with three of them, right? It's Fuaga, Quinn Mitchell, Aquinion Mitchell, and, and Terry and Arnold at 13, potentially those three names. Yeah. But I, I think Kyrie or or Cam, because the, the six three, those are big body corners. I, I think in, a, in those mid rounds, man, I think they may look at that, bro. At 13, no. No, no, not at 13. No, no, no. I'm talking about in the draft completely. Oh, yeah. Kyrie, listen, that's no, a not at 13. I would, be, I would be freaking ecstatic if we got him. Yeah. I would be ecstatic, man. I, there, it's just, you know what the thing is, man? It's very hard for me to say who the Raiders are going to take because Tom Telesco is such a wild card. Yeah, yeah. He's such a wild card. And it's like Coupon Tom might not value things the same way another GM will. Yeah. I mean, that's true. Salute. He said, I'm looking for wasted merch waiting on it. IRS coming, brother. I promise you, man. Salute to Hug. Also, Graf and Wasted should do a Pierce Telesco pod where they argue the draft and who they want to com uh, to complete with outfits and discussions. Oh, you want to get suit and tied up? Oh, that'd be dope. We should well, do. You know, it. Look, you know, I get suited and booted on a regular man, so you know that that's that ain't nothing but a thing. Hug, I don't own anything that ain't Raiders. Like, I, I don't. So it's nasty work out here in these streets. I gotta get a. I gotta get a suit, man. I, Bro, are you gonna have? Are you gonna have like a real tacky suit with a whole bunch of Raider emblems all over it, looking like the the, the uh, Carson Daly? Yeah, well, bro, you can't do. Don't be looking like the the Raider Riddler and shit, bro. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, also, man, I see my guy, man. Salute to my brother. Um, oh man, salute to you, bro. I appreciate you, Adam. Salute to my guy, man. He he went over there, mask and went and uh went grab some stuff as well on Oak Las Vegas, my brother. It's on the way, man. Salute to you, man. You guys are the greatest, man. Daniel says, uh, Graf gonna rent a tux, laugh out loud. I gotta get one, bro. It's gotta be rated out, though. Yeah, but it's, it's gonna be it's like, gonna be like Lloyd Christmas from Dumb and Dumber. He gonna get a, a powder blue tux. <laughs> this is the only shirt that I have that's not Raiders, and it's because it's my brother. It's 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 uh it's one of my guys. You know what I'm saying? That that like that is one of my guys' guys. Hash. It's this is his clothing line. So you know, I'm wearing his shirt, but I don't own really anything that ain't Raider uh, ain't Raider related. Salute to Pelican, man. Request for a shirt. Front have a YouTube play button. But instead, have it say pause with the play button switched out with the pause button. I'll buy it. <laughs> That's it right there. Pillagen is on to something, man. He's on to something, man. Salute to my guy. Pil I might have to do that, bro. And I, I have a shirt already that says Doc CNT with the YouTube play button, but I haven't done that. That's cold. That's a good ass idea. We got to do that. Let me see. Um, salute to you guys, man. As always, man. Wipe them feet, y'all. Hit them thumbs up. Uh, Paper Chase, we've done hella, uh, hella podcasts with Mo. Mo's been on the show with us a uh, uh, shit several times, bro. Mo, look, man, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real with you. Like I know Mo, you know what I'm saying. Before I got into the podcast and thing, right? So Mo's been on my show probably more than some of the guys in Shieldmore. Yeah, facts. 
Yeah, so nah, you can't. You, you just go back and look, brother. He just put out a good article today too of, of Tom Telesco's history of drafting. I don't know if you guys got an opportunity. What is it? Is it what's what's the website called again? Wait, is is it a uh, uh, not uh, sports uh, not sports not? Go check it out. Kind of uh, he broke down the history of how Tom Telesco drafts in terms of wide receivers, mid round wide receivers, the way he goes about drafting linebackers and offensive line. It's actually you really know who else did that? Grab a waste. did that twice. Yeah. Yeah, right here on YouTube. Go Definitely. back and watch it. Definitely, but 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 it's always great to see somebody else's opinion and their takes on 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 the same because there's always so much that we can all talk about. We all talk about the same shit. But you're right. No, we definitely did a deep dive into what he we, we broke down. Like I think his draft damn near to like the, the like 2018, 2017 or some shit. Yeah, yeah I, I I I did it. You did it. We did it together. You know what I'm saying? Oh, yeah. that time. Pause. Hey, That's yo. Oh, all right, y'all. Yeah. You know, and we had a blessed one. Salute. God, it's terrible. Oh, man, dog. And and you know what's nasty about what you just said? We literally just said moving forward is just us. Hey, man, tell you something. You guys aren't leaving me behind, man. (laughs) Fucking tell you something, man. You guys. Al girth rhythm. (laughs) Let me tell you something, man. You guys okay. think you're going to just be alone and I'm not going to pop out somewhere. You're sadly mistaken, man. <laughs> Graphic, I'd ask you something, man. We wasted up here talking about, you know, jerking his merch and all this stuff, man. It's nasty work out here in these streets, man. I just got to ask you a quick question, man. Do you feel comfortable sharing a room with this fucking guy? And <laughs> I'm going to be real with you. I, I'm actually, I just opened up another window, grew, and I'm actually canceling my flight to Detroit. Well, if I were you, I'd bring some mace. <laughs> Tell you that right now, man. Yo, Jenny, look at it. He took the whole screen up. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, with your face on it. Bro, Yo. Send yo, me yo, 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 look at look look at that. That's unbelievable, yo. That 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 that's like pause ecstasy, man. Bro, <laughs> oh, dude, dude, that is crazy, bro. <laughs> Unceremoniously blizzard. <laughs> Y'all get some more questions in before we get out of here. We're coming up on an hour and a half. We don't want to stay on all night and just and, and, and just talk. You know what I mean? We, we want to have something to talk about. Get, get some get some questions in, you guys, and let's definitely. Uh, break bread on these Raiders, man. Salute to Big Mike, our brother, man, in the building. Man. <laughs> Big Mike. <laughs> Salute to my dog. He said, popped out like a zipper open. <laughs> oh, <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. I think the Frank and the beans. And the beans over the Frank. You know, you know, <laughs> while we wait for some questions to pop in, you guys, once again, oaklawsvegas.com. Um, go get some merch. Tomorrow, live on Mitch's channel, you guys. Go over there and pop in. We're going to have some fun over there, have some drinks, shoot the shit, have a good time with the nation. Also, planetraiders.com. Big Mike has been dropping article after article after article on his top uh, top 30 for 30, you know, dropping a bunch of prospects from his draft. Go to planetraiders.com. Check out the articles. And if you want to also go to his YouTube channel, Big Mike Raider. He puts out visuals also with um, the articles. So make sure you go check with our brother, Big Mike. You already know what it is, man. We're so proud of you, Big Mike. I don't think you understand how happy we are for you in your, in your, in your personal life, in your career. You and Andy, man, you guys definitely... We so happy for you guys, man. Salute, salute. Yeah, big, um, big, big Mike said he he's gonna chop me in the chest and um give me the Samoan spike next time he sees me. So I, I can see it. You definitely deserve it right now, too. Salute to Lucky. Thoughts on the Raiders requiring another first round pick. I, I think it'd be great. I think it'd be great. Just what, what does it cost at that point, though? What, what does it cost to get another first? Because lucky, I'm thinking, right? If you go get another first, all you're doing is trading up to get another first and package those two to move up. That's what I'm assuming you're doing, or you're going to use one of them for Michael Penix Jr. But it just depends on what the cost, you know, what the price tag is with that. It's going to probably cost you an arm and a leg for that. You know, mask. I love Johnny Wilson out of Florida State, six seven wide receiver, big body guy. I would not be upset about going to get him in and bringing him into rec- in, as, as one of our receivers in those mid rounds. Yeah. He's available. I, I'm cool because once again, Tom Telesco has a history of drafting a wide receivers in the middle rounds. Big, you know, big wide receivers, too. Yeah, the, the, and, and, and you know what? That guy is a projection problem. Yeah. That's one of those guys that you might look back on and be like, man, how did they miss on him? A Darren Waller without the problems. That's a Darren Waller without the issues. Hey, did you, right. did you hear? I want to talk about this real quick, too. And salute also, man, to Rick 
uh, going to Oak Las Vegas. My dog, man. I appreciate you, brother. Did you see Robert Griffin drop that um, that piece on his podcast about Darren Waller? No. Damn, man. I, I don't want to go back into like former Raider guys. It just sucks how good this guy could have been. So he was throwing the football. The Raiders were, pra- uh, uh, were playing the, uh, the Baltimore Ravens, right? It was before the game. He was on the practice squad. Robert Griffin's out there, backup quarterback for the Baltimore Ravens. He's throwing to Darren Waller, right? Darren says, throw it up higher. He throws it up higher. He says, Darren, threw, jump down there into the middle of the sky. He said, no, 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 throw it higher than that, okay? He went up higher than that. The next week, he was on the active roster with us. The next week. Yeah, John Gruden was was over there, and he he he, he got an immediate man crush. Yeah. Saw, man. I mean, but, bro, like, but but Johnny Wilson, I mean, you know, Wilson could be that kind of guy, that big body receiver that can be that dude that can come in and, and potentially give us, you know, that extra option at the receiver position. I would hey, love man. But, you know, I don't mean you derail the show, man. I just want to talk to you about the time. First time I saw Darren Waller, man. He tell you something, man. Exactly what you're saying is what happened, man. He said, go higher. Higher and higher. You know how high he jumped, man? He almost knocked down a goddamn blimp out of the sky. The guy was <laughs> I'm going to tell one, you something. One man. That Antonio I, Brown was in. That's right, man. That's right. He knocked down that air balloon, man, with the frozen feet. But I'm going to be honest with you, man. I got a, I got a slight chub when I saw that, man. Oh, <laughs> Yo. The flag was at half staff, man. <laughs> He said the flag was at half staff. Salute to Antonio. Hey, if, pause too, man. See you later, man. Sorry. If you draft Penix, <laughs> but we have to consider moving Colton to the right to protect his blind side. No, no, no. You, you get no. your you get your right tackle in this year's draft if you do so, Antonio. You keep Colton on the left side. He hasn't played right tackle in a long, long time. Keep him on the left side. Salute to Antonio. I love this question right here. It has to be um, Peyton Wilson, right? Because defensive tackle is not really a necessity now with us bringing all of our guys back and going to get Christian Wilkins. I think it's easy to go get Peyton Wilson. Linebacker is more of a needy, a, a need position. And then he walks into that linebacker room and possibly is the best linebacker that we've had in fucking 10 years. Forever. Yeah, man. And then then you can look at saying we can let Divine Diablo walk in free agency or Spillane if you have your guy and you just sign one of them, which I think they're going to let Divine walk anyway. I'll be real with you. I, I'd be great to see Peyton Wilson uh, be that guy to, to, to pair with Spillane. That'd be a nasty, nasty uh, duo, bro. Yeah. Salute to Niles. We appreciate you, sis, for being here with us. Yeah, happy birthday, too. Yvette Niles, happy birthday. Also, um, th- they said it's a uh, Raiderette passed on. I don't see who they were talking about. Uh, they, you know, whoever that was, you know what I mean? We love everybody in the nation, man. Rock, Definitely. rock on. And also, Rick, brave Raider, our guy, is going to the hospital. He's going to have surgery. Oh, God shit. Speed. Yo, Rick. We love you, bro. Love you know you, what bro. I mean? yeah. And, you know, hopefully you come out stronger and better, man. Yeah. And, you know, when we see you at the next event, I can give you a chop. Bing! Across the chest like Gunther. Hey, wow. and Rick, the first drinks are on us, man. You know, when we see you in Vegas the next time. I know you do your bowling league stuff and all that. If you're out there in the area while we're out there, come hang out with us, man. Drinks on us. Salute to Iron Punchy. You can never have you can never have too many defensive linemen. You are right. But once you pay $100 million for one and you bring back – the likes of a John Jenkins and the likes of an Adam Butler, this just not necessarily a need. If Adam, I mean, if Peyton Wilson is available there, Punchy, I agree with you. But barring health, if he can stay healthy, that can be one of the next great linebackers in the NFL. It's a major if because he's dealt with some injuries out there in North Carolina, North Carolina State. He's dealt with some things. But if he can stay healthy, man, sideline to sideline guy, can play to run, good in coverage. He is an all-around linebacker. Animal. He's an he's an animal. Yeah, man. Not an animal, but that, an amino. An amino. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Matt, I would I like, take Fawaga. I like Latham too, but I like Fawaga. He just has a nasty, he has a nasty streak to him. I just think that he would be the guy to anchor that right side for the next 10 years. Real yeah. talk. And Fawaga is very, very he bro. He I just I just like how strong. Yeah, is. yeah, he bro. Dominant, bro. Fawaga is my guy, man. And, and, and mind you, there, there's some flaws in this game, but but guess what? That's why you have a guy like James Craig there, a veteran that can coach him up. There is some definite definite flaws in, in Fuaga's game. The strength is there. You know what I mean? Like if they can, if Craig can unlock that full potential, you got a potential all pro at, the, at right tackle. And, and yo, you know what's funny? People are talking about linebackers. Edron Cooper is my favorite. Yes. Yeah, my favorite player in this draft. Yeah, he's a dog out of AM. Yes. I would love for us to pick him up. But we pick him up, man. To me, he he can be a Pro Bowl or a Pro Level player. I, mm-hmm. I see that level of talent in that guy. 
Austin, that's another name to keep an eye on if we don't take a right tackle in the first round. Say we take Michael Penix Jr. or Terry Arnold or Quinion Mitchell. I think that Mims is going to fall to the second round. The right tackle out of Georgia, he's yeah. another mammoth of a man, and he he could be a nice right tackle at the next level too. If he's available, I, I would keep an eye on Mims, keep an eye on Blake Fisher out of Notre Dame. Those guys, if you miss out on those right tackles in the first round. But yeah. I think Mims will definitely drop, um, potentially drop to the uh, – to the first, uh, to the second round. Hey, hug, my bad, brother. Did I miss something? My, my bad, King. Let me see. Did I miss a few supers? My apologies. I never, I never, want, never want to disrespect one of the goats, man. Salute to my guy. Random question: Can you pinpoint the moment you became a Raider fan, or the play that solidified your membership to the nation? And go. I, I've told this story before, hug, but you weren't here. And I, look, that story time with with Graf and wasted real quick. If, if it's okay, you guys gather around the fire. So my my first my first thing right with with, with the Raiders, I was. I remember three years old, three and a half, four, somewhere around there. And my dad pulled up in a Monte Carlo. It was a white Monte Carlo. And he had a Raiders, he had a Raiders logo on the gas tank. And I walked out and I looked at it and I said, that's me. That's me. And my cousin was like, she's like, that look like you. I was like, that's me. Since that time, I, like I've been a Raider. And he was a diehard Raider too. You know, he had the Raiders dice in the, in the mirror and all that shit. There's few times I got a chance to really fuck with my dad in the past was, was, was Raider related. You know what I'm saying? So I seen that Raider logo on that gas tank and it was a wrap from there on. It was like that. That's who I am. And that's what it was. So that was my story of how I became a Raider. Just seeing the, just seeing the shield. I fell in love with the shield. And I, even before even knowing the game like that, I just seen the shield and it was just love at first sight. Yeah. I mean, for me, man, it, it's so long ago, man. I'm so old, man. I just, yeah, they had the leather helmets and shit, man. Fuck you, man. <laughs> I just, I'm just, I, Yo, I can't, he was like, I, I see Bart Starr out there, man. You know what I mean? And, yo, and I, I he it up his leather helmet. I don't really remember. I that's just like I I think it was the, the Super Bowl too in eighty in eighty three because that's the first Super Bowl I vividly remember watching. Yeah. And my dad was rooting for them, and I just used to follow suit behind my pops. You know what I'm saying? So <laughs> it, it wasn't really a choice for me. You know what I mean? My, my dad has never gave me anything in my life but the Raiders. And to this day, I can thank him for that because it was enough. And I've told this story before, you guys. I was born the week we beat the uh, the Redskins in the 83-84 Super Bowl, and he wasn't even at the hospital. He was at a Raiders party. And I, I love him for that. <laughs> so, you know what I mean? So I, I came into a Raider family. Like, I, I was born into a Raider family, just like Wasted was. Same thing. You know what I mean? OG dads, you know what I mean? Coming up in, the, in those grimy days. You know what yeah. I mean? Where the Raiders were known to just be the nasty motherfuckers. Like, and, and coming from Newark and coming from South Sacramento, like we come from those areas where it was like it just fit where we lived and what we and what we are accustomed to being around. You know what I mean? So, Thanks. when he said wasted was that Super Bowl one. God, well, fuck y'all, man. Damn, oh, wasted is an AFL goat. Man, damn, I'm an AFL goat now. Damn, yo, not the AFL, bro. <laughs> Goat, man. Salute to Devin. I was born in that Coliseum. It feels like I was too, bro. I swear I grew up in that stadium. Nothing like being in that stadium, smelling the Newports and the weed and, and that nasty cheap beer. It was it was nothing like it, man. Nothing like it, man. Um, let me see. Salute to everybody here in the building. A little story time with, 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 with Wasted and Graf. Uh, let me see. Trivia question. What was the what was the names of the Raiders at first and how long before the names changed? The seniors. Oh, yeah. The Oakland Seniors. And that we, we had the... Uh, the uh, gold and black, the gold and yeah. black. Loved it, man. Loved it. The Oakland senior. I, I love that name, but it's nothing like the Raiders, though. Yeah, the so, senior, that's that, man. I don't know. The senior is that would have sucked, man. Off topic question. What are your takes on J. Cole walking back his disc? It is nasty, nasty work out here, man. Because let me tell you something. Kendrick Lamar is not threatening. J. Cole is not threatening. Drake is not threatening. It is rap music. It is that shit was born out of competition. Right. And when you make a diss record like that, where it wasn't even nothing crazy even said and you backtrack from that, that's nasty work. Now, do I respect J. Cole? I definitely do, because he's on a different path, a different journey than us with sp his spiritual. I'm not going to beat him up for it. But in terms of rap, that was nasty, nasty work. And I'm telling you, now, I think Drake's going to drop a haymaker tonight. And I think Kendrick's going to follow that up with another banger immediately. Bro, look, this is the thing, man. Hip hop is about competition somewhere, so somewhere along the line. They got lost. Right. But hip hop, that's what it's about. Yeah. So if it's about MC, it's about MC. Now, see, this is the thing with, with, with J. Cole. J. Cole should have stayed the fuck out of it because he never, it's not for him. And Drake tried to push him in front of that beef. Yeah. He on tour with him, gassed him up, and he realized he made a mistake. 
Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Now him walking it back at this point, it, it looks a little, it looks a little lame because it's like, bro, like if you if you had no real intentions, you have no ill will towards this man, then be a man and be like, yo, I'm not in that. Yeah. You know, because I know he has the skills to destroy anybody he wants to, right? But you know what's more nasty or wasted was him going back on what he said, though. Right, and my bad. I'm gonna cut you off. Like he he said, you know, the albums was whack and all that, and then he said, like, it, it, I feel bad for lying. Like it, it just, it's a double whammy. It's like, damn, yeah, bro. Like, yeah, it's like bro, because when he said that, I was like, bro, like, listen, man. There, there's, there's been a lot of gold and platinum albums in hip hop. There have been a lot that have been critically acclaimed. How many have won a Pulitzer Prize though? Yeah. Just, just, just Kendrick Lamar. Look, man. When you talk about Kendrick Lamar, you are talking about the top top level of lyricist of all time yeah. that's how i view him i view Ken there, there are not a lot of guys from this era that to me you know how i feel about all these guys i'm not really Look, I, I love kendrick i'm Cole. not invested yeah i am i like kendrick and i and i like cole too i just don't like a lot of j cole's albums but he has a lot of skills you know what i'm saying but kendrick lamar you can put his mic up there with guys that came up in my era yeah. you can put his mic up there with the nazis and them guys he's he's in that ilk no, no, no. I, I believe I believe Kendrick Lamar, the way he crafts his albums and, and, and the places he's taking hip hop to artistically, you can't take it away from a guy who, it, it, yo, hip hop has been going on so long. They're, like now nah, I said, no idea is original, right? Kendrick has come into the game and done something, you know, with Good Kid, Mad City and, 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 and To Pimp a Butterfly and stuff like that. The way he does his albums, man, I got to give him a lot, a lot of respect. Now, as when you talk about them battling, it's really Kendrick and, and Drake that have been battling all these years. They've yeah. been sending shots at each other, and they need to just get it out. Drake need to go get his whole room of Ghost Riders to try to come up against K. He got the best writers in the world right now. I told you the other day. He in the room. The, yo, he got it. He got all. He he went out there and got Supernatural. He got Murder Mook. He got he got all of these battle rappers. I'm telling you right now, he got he got he got all of it. He got voice he got of five Ray, nine, got Ray rock and loaded lux and and, and, and all those. Uh, and he Ray got Ray. voice of five nine to craft it into a song. He got everybody in there on safety. This it's like a boardroom. Yeah, 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 yeah. Give me another line. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Like, get the, get the he says, yeah. Wait. Yo, so look, everybody, yo, oh. Big Mike is he? He chose violence today. He said favorite OJ Simpson moment. Go. Favorite OJ Simpson moment? I, I don't know. I'm not trying to cut up on this live like that. Cut up? Golly, bro. I see what you did. You a nasty. Big uh, Zoom! Ding, ding, ding. I mean, look, look, I'm too young to even watch OJ Simpson. We were just talking about the, that year we ran for over 2,000 yards. That was crazy behind that, that crazy old line that he had in the Buffalo. The electric company. The electric company. Yeah, yeah we, we weren't alive for OJ Simpson, bro. But OJ, I, the Bronco. The Bronco. The Bronco. Bro, we 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 weren't alive for OJ. OJ was already out of the league when by the time we and, and, and I might have been alive when he was like on the 49ers. I was, but I was a, a baby. I don't you know yeah. what I'm saying? I was a little yeah. kid. I don't remember that shit. But, but bro, he, what, he, I, he I don't remember rapper, is yeah. what I remember is is growing up watching NFL films and loving the way OJ Simpson ran the ball. He made me a fan of football from watching them old films and stuff like that. He's one of the guys who made me a fan, watching films on him, watching films on Gail Sayers and guys like that. That was the that was what NFL films was about. Yeah. You know what I mean? And him rushing for 2,000 yards was like 12 or 14 games. You can't put the other guys that rush for 2,000 yards up against the juice. Yeah, that's, not, that's crazy. It's crazy. Yeah, Naked Gun was hilarious, though. I, I do like watching uh, OJ. You know, those naked gun movies. Salute to Pillage and Just for Fun on becoming a member also. Appreciate you, brother. If you guys want to become a member, hit the links. They're pinned up top on both of our channels. We appreciate you guys, as always, man. Get a couple questions in before we get out of here. I'm going to get my sons here in a second, man. Uh, actually, I got to leave here in like two minutes. Um, Bro, let's yeah, we'll wrap it up. Um, real quick, on the way out, man, Ira is just a goat. He just on some... He, Shout he, out to Ira, man. He on some insane shit today, man. Salute to Ira, man. Salute to all the new members in the building because of Ira. I appreciate you, Ira. Make sure you pull up on that show tomorrow with Mitch. Come have some fun with us, man. Um, you guys, oh, damn, I can't say man. We 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 got somebody coming on the show here soon. Let's just say that we got somebody coming on, and I, yep. you're gonna love it. And real quick, DL Tibbs, listen, let me tell you something. I know Graph Rap. That don't make his opinion more valid than mine, right? We both have our own way. I've been down with you're this. right. You're right. You, you know what I'm saying? His, right. his, his shit is not more about. But before Graf was even on this planet, I was consuming this game.
call hip hop. You know what I'm saying? I remember when hip hop was 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 only on for an hour a day, bro, on, on New York radio, bro. Stop playing with me, bro. I remember listening to Red Alert and Molly Mall and 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 Chuck Chill Out and all of that. Man, I don't want to hear that, bro. I remember when I can go on, you know, Apple Music, yeah, man. And, but you know, it's you know, right, and, and, and bring up my album. Yeah, he's all right. Yeah, bring up my right. albums and, and shit like yeah, that. Yeah, but that don't mean anything, bro. Like, my fucking... Well, yo, so, that mean, so, that means, so that means that, like, Little B can come on here and say, that, oh, you know, I got out. Who cares, man? Cares, man. F no, but I, I got to tell y'all this. Real talk. I definitely... This is another reason why I love my brother Wasted, because hip-hop. Like, we talk hip-hop a lot. We talk hip-hop on the phone more than we talk about Raiders shit, because we always... We, we leave that for here. But we talk... Hip hop all day long. That's why we got to bring back uh, the Build Different podcast. Oh my God, man! Yeah, th that's what we. That is what we are needing right now, yo. Facts. Salute to Demarcus on the way out, and appreciate you for uh, grabbing some stuff at Oak Las Vegas. Jamie Foxx reenactment of OJ Glove ish was goaded. <laughs> <laughs> Facts, Demarcus. Salute to my guy. Um, one more time, you guys. Uh, San DLS. Sanjeet show will be soon. East Coast Gridiron. My brother's still in the chat this Sunday. We have a former Raider coming on the show here soon. He just tapped in with Wasted yesterday. We will have him on shortly. You guys are going to love this one. It's going to be real fun. Um, you know, and uh, yeah, we're not going to put the name out there yet because every time I do that, man, some of these players just go ghost and disappear. Yeah, um, right. you know, like, like Jermaine Illuminor going to the Giants and then unfollowing me on Twitter. You know what I mean? But it is what it is. You know what I mean? But we're going to have some fun these next few weeks. We got Jermaine whole... Illuminor looks like Bubba from DuckTales. Oh, woo! Facts. Salute to my guys, man. Bubba Appreciate y'all. <laughs> you got something Sorry. on way out? No, just he looks like Bubba the Cave Duck from DuckTales. <laughs> <laughs> That's it. Yo, wipe the feet on the way out, you guys. Hit them thumbs up. If you're not subscribed yet, man, make sure you hit that subscribe button on both channels. We appreciate you guys. As always, if anything drops, anything breaks, you guys know we'll be one of the first people out there to, to, to talk about it and discuss it, man. Salute to y'all. Love you guys. Appreciate you guys. Have a blessed blessed day life is short you guys live in the moment sometimes man real talk love y'all out one